question before we get into session. So, do you hold any IoT device now? Can, can you be louder? I, I have a mic, you don't have a mic. <laughs> so, okay, I, do you have any IoT device now in, with you? No? What? Mobile, yes. So, mobile is also one of the, you know, Internet of Things. So, what all sensors you have in your mobiles, or in general, any smartphone? So, why a mobile is called smart? They just one is GPS sensor, yes. So, to, to track your location, that is one sensor. Gyroscope, proximity sensors, what else? So what all sensors you are holding 24 7 with you? Camera, more like processing things, yeah. But any more sensors do you, do you recognize in your phones? Touch screen, yes, kind of. Fingerprinting, fingerprinting sensor, biometrics, all, all biometric sensors. Yeah. So today's my talk is about progressive web of things. So how many of you have uh, heard about progressive web apps? Progressive web apps. Have you tried uh, creating one app with PWA? Okay. So progressive web app things is an amalgamation of PWA plus Internet of Things. So when you combine progressive web apps and Internet of Things, it becomes progressive web of things. Yeah, thank you. So let's start with, let's try to understand with how a general application development is done. So a default choice for any application developer or the companies they look for is native. So what are the major uh, or popular tech stacks used for native app development? Android is one, yes. Android, iOS, Windows, they have many platforms. But it's a pain of developer, you know, to go through, you know, to, you know, to make it compatible to all these platforms. They have to, you know, make different versions of it, you know, maintain, maintain all of them. It's, it's a pain who develop it. Managers or the company owners might not know it, the, the client, but we developers know the pain we go through. Because uh, generally, uh, native uh, apps have all these features. It, it have you know engagement access to native features, high efforts. You know it has low up, rolling upgrades, less installs, all these things. This is one domain of developing applications, but we also have parallelly other domain of application, popular we use the domain of web. So comparing this, in the web applications, you have some other features. Web has unique features, it's, com it's widespread across the globe. Native applications can go to only some devices, but web, it, it has wider reach. You don't need any installation. For example, some, you, you, for, for something to, you know, to access in a mobile, you have to keep on installing apps. But for the same thing, if you want to access a web, web app, all you have to do is enter a URL. But how about combining best of these two worlds? Combining the best features of native application and also combining the best features of web to both of things. So when you combine both of things, we have progressive web of things. Progressive web of things has a hybrid variety of features. It gives you, a, it's the same web application with enhancements would give you mobile-like experience, progressive web design, re-engagement at its best. Your clients or users don't have to go through pain of, you know, installing all the applications. The one more beauty is they can also work offline, like native apps do. And it also has other uh, feature-rich uh, uh, experiences, periodic background synchronization, push notifications. So these are the futures of PWA. We understood about PWA. Let's try to understand the industry of IoT. We 
are in 2019. It is expected that by 2020, the amount of IoT devices in the world would, would cross 20 billion. It means every human on the earth, on an average, will have more than six IoT devices tracking you. You already have uh, uh, IoT devices uh, tracking you 24 seven. So let, let's try to understand how we can um, uh, combine PWA with IoT. So if you understand IoT architecture, structure, you have perception layer where you have all these sensors, you have network layer where all this data goes to, the routers, gateways, and you have application layer. So when we talk about combining PWA with IoT, we mean the combination happens in the layer of application layer. Okay, sorry. But the problem here is, if you, the, the IoT industry is booming very rapidly, but it also has its own problems. So every company is building their own framework, every company is building their own standards, but we don't have common universal standards like we have for web. So what are the problems we'll have with this? You can't connect devices that come from different manufacturers, which are compatible for different standards. You can't combine them and make into a product. That is one more. Pro that is one big problem. With this, the connectivity of IoT devices decreased, and it can't be increased more. And you have many other problems. But combining with web, open web, we can bring all the good features of open web to IoT. With this, we can increase the reach of IoT to the level of the reach of web. You can bring all of the features. So this, so Internet of Things is, you know, it's, it's rubbish, it's too messy. But combining with web of things, it's easy peasy. But the problem here is, uh, uh, so when you're connecting everything into web, with the, domain, with the increase of the business of data, we're using uh, uh, IoT. If, if the business of agriculture is very good, the business of harvesting machines will also be good. A anyone uh, linked to the business of agriculture? Do you know harvester machines? The harvesting is now automated. We have to uh, see IoT connected with the boom of data industry. There is an increased uh, 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 demand for IoT because there is increased demand for more collection of data. So IoT sensors here are the harvesters of data. So uh, everything is good. We have PWA, we have IoT, we combine things. Now we have progressive web of things. But there is a problem here. So who are doing all these things? They have a vested interest that they want to use all this data for the business. When you mean data, data about roads and trees is okay. That's public data. But the same industry is also collecting data about all our personal lives. When you, data about roads and data about persons are not same. So if some IoT device collects my BP 24-7, my, my, all my uh, uh, which expects me to have a transaction with my facial biometrics or finger biometrics, that's a problem. How many of you have Aadhaar card here? Anyone of you don't, anyone here don't have an Aadhaar card? So, so we now live in an era that everyone have a, a tracking ID with you. Good, in 2019, uh, uh, we use Aadhaar for limited purpose, but I'm sure if you follow the news, the, the use of Aadhaar is being expanded. When, when we enrolled for Aadhaar, we just gave fingerprints and iris. But in the level one, you also have other two things. One is face and a voice biometrics. Face you already have in the photo. The government recently also ma uh, uh, made it mandatory you know, to use uh, face, face detection as a mandatory. Maybe in two, uh, two, three years, the voice detection will also be made mandatory. This is level one that is also okay. But in level two, you have even more sensitive information that are supposed to add to this biometrics. 
So there's a bill in parliament that uh, everyone is expected to link your DNA profiles to your Aadhaar. Very good. So the cabinet have approved it. It's, it's, it's a, it's a uh, after the topic topic. Some some other day it will come to parliament. So it, it might get approved. We will also be again asked and forced, you know, be in the line uh, out of the DNA centers, get our DNA profile and link it to Aadhaar. So this is all happened. That is fine. But imagine a future where you have surrounded by all trackers and sensors, each and every minute of your life is being tracked. So when you use IoT, you have different applications. One is phone. Now you see many other things called smart home, smart office, smart college. Everything is turning into smart. But uh, there's a popular saying that the, when, when you expand smart, smart has a, a abbreviation, S-M-A-R-T, surveillance marketed as revolutionary technology. Okay. So all this IoT, data science, boom, everything is happening in the layer of smart, making the world smart. Okay. So good we, 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 we're developing as a human race we're developing in technology but on the other side it's a serious threat to our personal privacy so let's see how to how can we deal this with our privacy so let, before getting into solutions let's try to understand the problem where all this data is being stored in the cloud so you would go to come any company all the companies are moving their business to and the solutions to cloud. So what happens? All the data stores in Microsoft Azure. We have a sponsor, Microsoft Azure. So 20 years back, Microsoft said open source is cancer. Now, Microsoft is saying Microsoft loves open source. So now, Microsoft says Microsoft loves open source. Can anyone guess why the change happened? What is the motivation behind the change? Business, what business? More customers, more, more business in open source. Monthly subscription for the Azure. What else? What else could be the reason? Data. Yeah, that's what we're talking about, data. We have uh, all these uh, corporations suddenly turned very kind to open source. There's a motivation. So let's try to understand the industry and business. Around 20 years back, when the main uh, mode of business selling software is proprietary, uh, communities and volunteers have started the free and open source movement. Then we used to own the machines, the companies used to own the code. But over the period, the communities have developed alternatives to the software stacks with the corporates. They have changed the plan. With the evolution and you know, with the boom of cloud industry, the corporations started owning the machines, and the code remained started remaining with the communities. Okay, so this is a shift happened in last 20 years. So there are many open source community, Mozilla, the free software communities, and other communities togetherly built all this software. Now the equation has been changed. Now companies are okay to host open source as a service because they are very sure the other part is owned by them. So now the business model is the code is no more a product but the service is the product now. Okay, they, they get money from you know, different subscription models and all. That is only one part. There's a bigger reason other than uh, uh, offering open source as a service. The bigger reason is by centralization of all these things, they have the power to gather as much data as they can gather. If GitHub is owned by Microsoft, they, they have a, they'll have an option to connect that and encourage more people to host GitHub open source projects into Microsoft Azure. Okay? The more people use this open source software, now 
open source software is used for surveillance. 20 years back, proprietary softwares are used to be the main channel of surveillance through backdoors. Now the surveillance have turned from proprietary surveillance to open surveillance, but the surveillance is same. Now, that, that didn't change. So, is source code being open, is that the only thing uh, uh, we needed to, to turn the world utopian? No. The source code is open, but still we have the bigger evils, centralization. Facebook have React, Google have Angular, Microsoft have other open source, GitHub, they own the platform itself. So the corporates open, own all these open source projects, they offer, they're very kind, Google offers a Google Summer of Code, but the bigger evil is centralization. How many of you know your data is leaked or not? Are you following data leaks? Are you following your da are you following data leak? So can I can I can I tell some tools that if you want to, you you can see if your data is available online? Uh, uh, look, who are connected to the internet? Please check our website monitor.firefox.com. So I'll tell you some tools. So let's let's start looking at the darker side of this data surveillance. The darker side of the data surveillance is. All the data tracked by your GPS locations, all the data tracked by your other sensors of your phone is now available on the open web and also available in the dark web. The monitor.firefox.com just shows you what data of you are available online. Go to monitor.firefox.com, just enter your the mostly or frequently used email ID. Monitor, M O N I T O R, monitor.firefox.com. Uh, is it connected to internet? No, right? So, uh, no, 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 no. Fire, fire is just a, it's something like a search engine for data leaks. Huh. Can I open a text editor here? Oh, sorry. So, so have, have you checked it? Anyone got your leaks there? How many leaks? Three. You have three data leaks. Anyone else? Seven. Wow. Two. Six. So there, there you can see the data leaked from your phone. In some leaks, your GPS location is leaked. 24-7 of your GPS location, where you have been, where you are going, whom you are with, all it is leaked. So just imagine what kind of threat you can get. So imagine a case, there are riots happening in India. Maybe in future, okay, the rioters can see the GPS location of you, okay, can then figure out, okay, this, this is the maximum area you can reach, and you, they can do data-driven riots. <laughs> okay, so that there could be, so for example, in the, the narrative in Bollywood movies, on, movies might also change. Around 20 years back, to kidnap someone, we used to have omni vans, very stereotypically shown. But if I want to kidnap someone in uh, 2020, post 2020, I can get, I, I can somehow find uh, their Uber and Ola data from someone, some third party. I can figure out uh, the, the the places, the work and home places of you. But if I want to kidnap on that day, I can recruit my own drivers within your vicinity. So once you get into the car, done. So data driven kidnaps. So in this, this is a beautiful world we're getting into the data-driven uh, businesses, smart things. Let's try to see how, no, that is done, that is done, that is, just go to back slide. So let's see how to ensure privacy. The very essential and fundamental aspect of our life in this growing age of Internet of Things. So for example, decentralization is very important. If you have seen the, the uh, previous architecture of the thing, in the network layer, uh, in the cloud, in the cloud layer, you have cloud and servers. If anyone is good in cloud servers, you have different uh, things. We have cloud computing, edge computing, for computing. So, when everyone is jumping into cloud computing, I recommend you to explore the fog and edge computing solutions for IoT. So, if you do that, if someone want to do, uh, if someone want to make their office smart office, if someone want to make their home smart office, 
You can use uh, uh, solutions like Mozilla's web things. In a typical web tender, all the data of your sensors and mobile would finally get into and saved in the cloud owned by someone else. And in India and many other countries don't own a privacy law. They can sell your data at any cost whenever they want. But on the other end, if you use the solutions, you can have a decentralized mini server within your home, a private server. So all the data, all the commands you give can be stored within the server you stay in your home and you don't have to surrender all your data to the, the cloud monopolies. Okay? With the advent of new web standards, it's not just uh, the few uh, uh, adding to home screen, making mobile response. These are not the only features. Like you said, you have uh, different sensors in your mobile. With the modern web APIs, you can connect to all of them and operate them via web of things. So you, you, there are different applications of WebUSP, WebRTC API, Web NFC API. I'll show you two demos uh, how Web of Things works. Uh, so uh, this is a Web of Thing uh, have been developed uh, using Mozilla Web Things. Uh, it tests the uh, leakage of the water. So you can see this. Uh, You can see the leak have been detected. You'll, someone will get a push notification. The, one of the best parts of PWA, you'll get push notifications for everything you get, get it. Uh, you don't have internet. So one more demo. So I've been only given uh, 30 minutes, uh, but we have a, a Mozilla community center in the community section uh, given by the organizers. We also have some IoT devices with the, within the time uh, limit. We're not able to show the IoT devices here, but anyone who want to make a small web of thing before you before the conference ends someone want to master how to create web of things you can just come to web of things after the session me and my time t team would be there to assist you and help you so we are not the employees we are the volunteers working with the, uh, working with passion so feel free to come to us we won't shout at you okay thank you you mentioned this is uh, iot and pwa Yes. But IoT with native apps or dashboard, as long as the data is going, PWA is just going to be the way it's rendered. What difference does it make how the data is seen as long as it's seen? So it's not about the rendering part. It's not about the rendering part. It, it's, it makes it easy on the part of the collection of the data. So obviously, in the, in the rendering part, you need large, uh, I don't know, the scale of the rendering needs, if you're big, building a big business, obviously, you need supercomputers and all. But I'm sure majority of the IoT development happening now is you know, in the small scale. So for example, I want to use it for my home, a very small scale. Or a college graduate want to use it for their uh, project. So for these uh, things, uh, like, like with the previous session, it is something like you know the less code solution for building IoT. So if you go to Web of Things, uh, you have other Web of Things. But Mozilla's Web Things, if you, if you look at Mozilla Web Things, it's almost a, a no code solution to you know build your projects. Thanks. So the scale is what it differs. About uh, demo. Yeah, I think people are interested about your breaches. Uh, I, I'm I'm actually uh, scared to uh, to give out the, all the tools because the the, the tools uh, with using the tools you can also find uh, others personal data. So it's an ethical issue. I can't give the advanced tools, but I can give you the basic tools. You can see your uh, your own uh, astrology. What do you call? Uh, Astrology is a pseudoscience. They might not know how you're alive by looking at your fingerprints or something. But I can tell you one thing very uh, confidently that there might be, uh, uh, no one might have same fingerprints in the world, but someone might have by mistake, but no one will have same Google search. They're calling it personal solutions. Okay. So what they do with all this data, they, they take all this data, they say in the name of personalization, they create filter bubbles to you. So uh, no one's news feed is same. No one's Google search is same. The dark picture is, you know, it might be new thing from the mainstream, but, 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 but when, you, when you're a privacy activist, when you're into security, it's hard to digest things. So one more thing I was telling, uh, to tell some examples. Uh, in the uh, AP, government of AP uh, have uploaded uh, Aadhaar link data uh, uh, with the pregnancy, with the pregnancy women, uh, 
So the, 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 their health data is atti attached to Aadhaar, and it has been uploaded. They say it's data leak, that is OK. The, uh, that's, uh, that's one part. But on the other part, companies which don't have ethics or whatever, they collect this data. They use this data you know, for the dark practices. A, a case in USA um, uh, that uh, a father of a 16-year-old teenager found that uh, his daughter is pregnant. So he's very angry he finds, uh, that uh, Facebook knows about my daughter's pregnancy before me. So because they found out this because uh, he figured out, uh, so when, when uh, 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 investigating the case, her teenage daughter used a pregnancy application. So not, uh, not pregnancy, menstrual tracker. If you see, there are many new applications to track the menstrual cycle of women. So it has a login with Facebook option. So, so the business is, whenever you log into something with login with Facebook, login with Google, or login with Apple, it means that a copy of the data also goes to the big people. So when the 16 years old, she doesn't know the, how the world works, she logged in with Facebook. So all her menstrual uh, data is uploaded to Facebook. So some uh, random month, uh, her menstrual uh, cycle is kept. Facebook have figured out. And Facebook also have other data. Facebook also knows whom she starts with, how frequently, where they go with, how they hang out. So if, if you remember, you might think Facebook only tracks your only comments, likes, and uh, shares. But the moment once you open a profile photo, Facebook starts tracker. OK, this person is the other person. Facebook also tracks your mouse movements on the photo. If you are moving your mouse around eyes, if you are moving your eyes around nose, Facebook makes a record. But we get even more curious. We, we click the list of likes. We want to see who are liking the photo. So Facebook make, makes a record that, OK, this person is so interested, they want to see list of likes of the other person. We get even more curious. We get into the comments. We want to see what all comments are getting reply, what all comments are being ignored, what all comments are getting likes. So we think that we are doing research on the other person. Parallelly, Facebook is doing research on both the people. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 OK, I, I think we're running out of time. But uh, very uh, uh, more interesting things, more funny things. I want to talk, I don't have time, but please come to the Mozilla community booth. I'll be outside. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Please be, give a round of applause. Yeah.